Hey there, welcome to my in-depth video about naproxen on how and when to take it. I also made a patient version, it's way shorter and to the point. It also covers all the basics and you'll find the link to that description in the video if it's more suitable for you. So let's get started. First of all, a little disclaimer. This video is purely meant informational. This is not medical advice. And if you're looking for medical advice, please make sure to ask your doctor or check your prescription. Then naproxen belongs to the group NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, diclofenac. Naproxen inhibits the production of prostaglandins through the inhibition of COX. And naproxen is a generic name. It's also known under common brand names like Elaviv, naproxenum, or anaprox, and it's available in tablets mostly. Then, when can you take it? Um, it's analgesic, antipyretic, and anti inflammatory, and therefore it will work to lower your pain. You can take it for any form of pain headaches, toothaches, gout, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, any form. Um, it will help to lower the pain. You can also take it to lower your fever uh, and flu, common colds, or any form of fever. Here it says ibuprofen, but of course I also mean naproxen. And off-label naproxen can be used for lower back pains, migraine attacks, and vaginal blood loss. Then look at some advice. Um, if you're taking naproxen to lower your pain, uh, make sure to do it in a step-by-step -step approach. You go to the next step when there is insufficient pain relief, when there are contraindications for one of the steps, or uh, in specific indications, and this would be oncological pain, uh, then you usually start with opioids, morphine, because it requires more strong painkillers. So the first step in a situation of pain would always be paracetamol. That's the lowest amount of side effects, it's cheap, and it often works effectively enough. But if this for some reason is insufficient, you go to the next step, NSAIDs like naproxen. You can combine those with paracetamol to increase your painkilling effects. Then the next step would be tramadol or uh, oxycontin. Uh, those are uh, low opioids and have stronger pain killing than step one or two. Next step would be oral or transdermal strong opioids like morphine or fentanyl. And lastly, subcutaneous or intravenous strong opioids. This is mostly morphine and it's mostly only done um, in hospital situations. Then if you take um, naproxen for migraine, Always start with paracetamol first. This has the same effectiveness as step two and step three, but it has less side effects and is cheaper. So start with paracetamol. If this is insufficient for some reason, try an NSAID like ibuprofen or naproxen. And if this is insufficient, oral tryptans would be the last step. For children, this is a little bit different. Children get paracetamol or ibuprofen as first step, and then oral uh, tryptans as step two. So that was that for advice. Then we go look at the dosage and the usage. Always use the lowest possible dose, which still is effective. And this way you can minimize your side effects. How do you use naproxen? Uh, always take it with some water before or after a meal. And if you take it before, it works a little bit faster. Wait 8 to 12 hours between doses to stay on the correct level. Not too high, not too low. How long can you do it? Usually till your complaints are over. But if it takes more than 10 days, you should uh, contact your doctor because another treatment maybe is better for your situ situation. If you take naproxen for headaches, make sure uh, to only do so short term because if you take it for several weeks, naproxen can increase your headaches. And this is not what we want. It's uh, naproxen induced headache then. If you take naproxen for migraine attacks, make sure to only do so when you have actually an attack. And if you're experiencing more than two attacks a month, this would be an indication to contact your doctor because maybe some other medication would be better for you. Regarding safety, naproxen can lead to vertigo, dizziness or fatigue. Uh, if this is the situation, then it's not safe to drive for using naproxen. And otherwise, if you're not having these side effects, you can perfectly drive with naproxen. 
Regarding alcohol, alcohol may increase the side effects you're experiencing from naproxen. Therefore, this is something everyone needs to test for their own. If you're not having more side effects, it's okay to drink one or two glasses maximum a day. Otherwise, uh, you should not use alcohol. And regarding food, there are no restrictions. You can combine naproxen with any type of food. Regarding dosage, if we if you take naproxen for fever and or pain, you can use 200 to 250 milligrams as an adult. Every 8 to 12 hours is necessary. Up to 750 milligrams a day maximum. For elderly, this maximum is just 4 to 500 milligrams a day, so a little bit less. For children older than 6 years, 10 to 11 milligrams per kilogram a day divided over 2 doses is allowed. And you can do so for a maximum of 3 days. And if after 3 days the child would still need naproxen, this would be an indication to contact your doctor. Then if you have a child older than 12 years or more than 50 kilograms, the maximum dose would be 250 milligrams at uh, a time every 12 hours. So a maximum up to 500 milligrams if necessary. If you're taking naproxen for joint disorders like atrosis or an arthritis, adults can take 275 to 750 milligrams in two doses. For, for short-term use, you can even use up to 1,000 milligrams a day. Make sure to only do so for a week maximum. If naproxen is given for juvenile idiopathic arthritis in children older than 6 years, 10 milligrams per kilogram can be given divided over two doses. Then, if we are looking at migraine, you can give 500 milligrams a time once a day for the short term of a maximum 1,000 milligrams a day. And if you take naproxen for gout attack, start with 750 milligrams at 500 milligrams after 8 hours and then 250 milligrams every next 8 hours till your gout crisis is over and your complaints are gone. And this is basically all the dosages you need to know from naproxen. Then some side effects. Naproxen is the NSAID with the lowest cardiovascular risk, but the highest gastrointestinal risk. Now that's something to take into consideration. And regarding side effects, often 1 to 10% of all cases we see any of these side effects. I won't name all of them. Feel free to pause the video to check them out a little closer. But heartburns, nausea, stomach pain, abdominal pains, constipation, headaches, and allergic reactions are among the things we see often while using naproxen. Then sometimes in a tenth of a percent to a percent, we see any of these, so thirst, diarrhea, vomiting, bruises, among others. Once again, feel free to pause the video if you want to see them a little bit longer. Then rarely we can see any of these. It's a whole list of side effects like fatigue, temperature reduce, insomnia, nervousness, many others. And then lastly, very rarely we see one of these, so skin rash. Um, yeah. If you think that you may be experiencing one of these side effects or maybe another one, always check your prescription and contact your doctor to see if it's necessary to switch the dose or to even stop. So that's important to a take-home message. Then naproxen has a lot of interactions. I just will name the most common ones. When combined with oral anticoagulants, may lead to an increased risk of bleeding. When combined with SSRIs, antithrombotics, vitamin K antagonists, or corticosteroids, this may lead to an increased risk of gastrointestinal complaints. And this is especially true for elderly. So uh, always start the lowest possible dose for the shortest duration and consider using a proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole as extra protection. Then don't combine them with other NSIDs or aspirins because it may increase uh, your side effects. Then when combined with cyclosporins, uh, may increase nephrotoxicity. When combined with a RAS inhibitor and impaired kidney function in a patient, this may even worsen the kidney insufficiency, so please be careful. And lastly, when combined with cedofidin, metrotexate, or lithium, the plasma levels of the medications may increase, so take that into consideration and possibly lower their doses. Then, if you're taking um, naproxen and you're pregnant, uh, it will go through your placenta, 
therefore it's not safe in the first and third trimester and it may harm the pregnancy and even the child and even if you want to become pregnant so you're trying to become pregnant naproxen may lower your female fertility uh, so you should quit using naproxen if you want to become pregnant because this uh, negative effect is reversible then for lactation naproxen passes through in the breast milk but it can be used safely however we recommend to do only in sh uh, for short-term use lowest possible dose and um, if possible don't use it at all then the next topic is contraindications um, there are a lot gastric ulcers gastrointestinal bleedings active ulcerative colitis or morbus crohn cerebral vascular accidents or bleedings uh, increased bleeding tendencies and allergic reactions on naproxen in the past or any of the other NSIDs severe renal or hepatic impairment heart failures and lastly dehydration which are all reasons not to use naproxen you should be very careful then some warnings start the lowest possible dose and think about stomach protective medication like uh, proton pump inhibitors especially for elderly patients and patients with high risk which have ulcers for example check the kidney function especially in elderly and persons with a reduced renal perfusion and cirrhosis of the liver heart failure sodium uh, retention and pre-existing renal diseases so if you want to prescribe naproxen in any of these patients always check the kidney function first then uh, effectiveness and safety in children younger than six years is not proven so please don't prescribe them naproxen and in the case of visual effects always contact your doctor because you probably would need an eye exam if used for more than three months start doing routinely blood check of rib, uh, liver and kidney functions and a blood, blood assay um, if used for more than three months it can also lead to headaches and if this is the case please stop using naproxen and switch to another painkiller and lastly stop naproxen when you find deviating blood values severe liver insufficiencies ulcers bleedings or hypersensitive reactions and then we come to my last slide some kinetic properties um, naproxen resorbs orally quick and fully and rectally it's way slower Tmax is orally two to four hours so quite quick protein binding is 99% it's metabolized by the liver and eliminated for 95% by urine by your kidneys and it takes 10 to 17 hours for the values in your blood to half so this is my in-depth overview on the uh, naproxen if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment sections I also made a more shorter video you can find that one in the description it's more to the point and if you want to see a video about the other NSIDs like ibuprofen or diclofenac make sure to check out the description on my other videos because I already made those thank you for watching and see you soon bye